My name is um, Mark Weiss. I'm 31 years old. Um, I started with an apprenticeship as an electronics uh, technician for information and telecommunication systems, followed by three years of freelancing. And since 2008, I'm working for the Kessler GmbH, and now I am one of the CEOs. So the agenda, um, before we take off, we, I will give you a short introduction into SaltStake itself, um, to SaltStake in context with Git, and at last I will demonstrate a proof of concept how that will work in real life. So um, let's got, get started with Salt. Um, now what is Salt? So briefly, SaltStake is a configuration management a infrastructure orchestration tool, an infrastructure management tool, or simply a remote execution engine. That's what the website itself um, tells us. And it's um, released on the open source uh, Apache 2.0 license. SaltStack and its components is uh, not all, they are a bit more than that but um, these are the main components and I will walk through this um, to get a picture for you how a SaltStack is working. So the master is the um, central configuration uh, management tool where you um, are doing all this uh, configuration stuff. The minion, um, you know it from the movie, it's not a simple yellow um, nice uh, freak is the client-side um, software you have to install on your remote server. The Zero MQ is Salt's uh, communication backend, so every uh, communication goes to Zero MQ and off. The grains um, that are um, used in the configuration on the Salt master are the system information from every client, so CPU um, technology, how much RAM, which um, <coughs> Linux distribu distribution is uh, installed, and so on. The pillars are user-defined information for the state, so um, it looks like um, a bunch of um, variable declarations. And the states, is the next one, are user-defined um, they are like formulas where you can write down what uh, is to install, how it is to configure, and what will happen next. The formulas are um, similar to states but have an exact um, directory um, structure to um, fit in because um, SaltStack itself has a repository on GitHub. And if you're um, good enough, you can um, build up these formulas and contribute it there. And the execution modules um, so are predefined comments which are executed on the minion. And the last is uh, Ginger. It's the default template renderer that's uh, inso inside salt used. So a short, um, quick look into salt's topology on the salt master. Um, you um, execute normally just one state, it's called the high state, and um, in this state there are um, magic, where over grains or glob globbing or e regular expressions, the states for the minions are matched. This is um, happening here. And the states guild, uh, get filled up with information from the pillar of a ginger maps and grains and will be fill, filled up with this data. The job itself um, is then stored in 0MQ for the minion and the minion uh, takes the job and executes it. Updates and results are communicated over 0MQ back to the master. So that's it in the short view and there's, there's a bit more. So now, a uh, quick look into the salt stack and git directory that we built up. I hope um, you can see it uh, behind 
If not, you have to download the PDF later on on Barrios. So um, we spend a lot of time to get this directory structure um, to fit for our needs. Um, the first one is the um, salt directory itself. itself. It's a surrounding Git repository where, we'll, where we put all data in. In there, we have the pillar directory. It's the pillar root that salt uses. We have the salt formula. Uh, the salt formulas um, that are customer independent. That's um, really important. And the states files uh, that are customer specific if you have to do uh, something what's um, just for interesting for one customer. In the pillar roots and the states, we have a TLD structured directory. This, that means um, with orgd.com, we are separating um, the customers. And under this uh, TLD directory structure, we have our customer. Here are the OSB conf or CAS network itself. In every customer um, directory, there is a, a separated directory for the server. And in there, there's just uh, one file for the pillars. So um, they get the variable data in. <coughs> Good. That's just a quick overview. So um, let's get started. And I am um, pleased to turn off your Wi-Fi because I need the bandwidth by my own. <laughs> Or we are sitting at uh, 9 p.m. Yeah, again. So I prepared um, two servers for uh, demonstrating how we use that on CentOS 7. I'm already logged in here. So um, the first server is the uh, Salt Master. I will install with a bootstrap from saltset.org, just the um, salt master. And the salt master, or this, this server, will um, have the, the master, the barriers director, the storage daemon, and um, the configuration, the git uh, repository, and so on. The second server I prepared is um, just um, Nice server with a uh, collab group were installed to um, demonstrate how we can um, that we can back up mail files in there. So um, I can log in here. It's a new community version of Colab, if it's interesting. So there are emails in there. And uh, we want to back up that later. So um, the salt master is installed. That's quite nice. And now to get the whole uh, good stuff um, we need for the uh, salt, we have to prepare the good repositories. So on my local um, notebook, I have prepared um, a function file because we are communicating um, with the API of Git. We are using um, some functions every time, and it's just in this bash file for listing users, listing groups, and creating groups, and so on. So now let's source that. So we have um, this nice Git lab functions here. So now that's uh, my token. I have to recreate it afterwards. <laughs> so that's my token for Git, so I can get uh, in there. Now you have time, 40 minutes, to hack my system now. So next is um, we are creating and saving a Git group. <coughs> And for every user um, we have in Git, we want to add it to that um, new created, new, newly created group. 
and after that we want to create the surrounding repository called salt for our customer. Yep, it's working fine. So now we can see um, I created the repository here. Now we have the OSB conf available and can put in there our data. Now back on the server we can use that. So I will go into the salt masters configuration. You see it's all commented out, so it's plain the salt master configuration, it does nothing. Um, we have to prepare it a bit. We want to add the pillar routes I um, talked about before. So we are pending at the end of the file. Well, have a look. If it's there, yes. Now we have the pillar routes and the file routes. Pillar are always the same, so there's the customer configuration um, later and the salt formula and our customer osb.conf. Um, because we are work working a bit with Git, I have to declare two more variables. And um, yes, I have to install Git at that time. And because I'm not logged in with uh, my directory account at home and just root, I have to tell um, Git who I am. Yep, that's done. So um, I will change into my directory SRV and creating just the directory salt. Um, giving a permission I like. Okay, now changing into that. And say git init. Yes. Now we have initialized an empty git repository um, which will be the sur surrounding support you later. And um, to get in the data we need, uh, the structure, we um, have to um, create two Directories, one is the pillar, one is the state. Pillar is the, you have in mind, the customer-specific um, variable data, and the states are the customer-specific states. So for the pillar, we use a little wrapper. It converts the FQDN um, of the given servers um, later to a reverse dotted um, directory structure so um, the salt master can find its pillar data because we're done using uh, dots and directories. So, at next, we need um, a bit more of directories, and I'm using my loop function here because we are created it to uh, manage more than one customer at a time. And the next step, I will get all my salt formulas, including, um, oh, please make sure, whatever done. Okay, it's the copy and paste. So, um, yes, this is um, where we connect to our um, Git repository. I can give you a look at the salt formulas we have here. The minus sign in the front um, tells me that uh, these formulas are not locally available. We can have a look in the Barrios formula. The directory itself is created, but in there, in Barrios, is nothing. It's just empty. 
So now let's get them down for using it. So we can connect to um, our GitLab. And um, while we're downloading the salt, formu uh, salt formulas, a little bit about uh, a little bit information about um, the sub modules we are using, um, because um, we try to centralize the um, configuration for each of us, uh, our customers, we um, decided to use the sub module to get these at te at templates and we uh, using we can use it in the um, customer repository itself otherwise um, we had to clone the repositories for each customer and um, that will be uh, lots of stuff every time and um, if I work on a salt formula I can update only this repository and um, I have these changes available at every customer just in time. So, needs a build. After that, um, we can have a short look if we have all downloaded correctly. So, you see the minus sign in the front is now um, gone, and we can have a look in the Barrios formula. You see it's um, a second directory bar um, Barrios here. Is, this is because of the um, directory structure formulas that Salts um, gives us how we have to write it down. Pillar example, a uh, bit of uh, readme, and in there. We have um, the SLS files. These are all states files. Um, in those files, we are describing what the system has to do with that state. So, to get it, uh, to get it uh, right for the customer, we can add it, add a group. So, we have to show, to look in if we are using the um, right customer, OSB, conf, and we, wanna, we want to commit that and push it to the master. So now, because salt and our directory structure are not 100% compatible, we have to add all salt formulas um, manually to the uh, salt master configuration. Um, you have seen it before. Yeah, the salt master configuration at the end, we have just uh, the formulas and the uh, user state directory included. And to get all formulas in there, we can use uh, simple for. And now I have all salt formulas in there and can use it. So the salt master has to be restarted at this time. And we are ready to add the first um, minion. That's the server itself. Um, with that command, you can see unaccepted keys are the backup server itself. So if I'm, um, I'm sure I can add that server, say yes, I want to manage it. And after that, it's in the accepted keys. And we at this, um, at this point uh, can configure the salt states for the host to install and configure Barrios or Bacala. Um, first, we have to create the host directory where we will put in the um, state information data. So you can see it's a simple include. 
um, what we need is a database, in uh, this case MariaDB. We are managing um, the various repository, so I can choose the repository for the version I want to install, because um, while the yesterday I was um, on the hacking conference uh, and um, I had problems with including my Python files plugin, I decided to um, pump my states. So today I will install the newly um, released um, 50.2 installation. I've checked it. Um, in early in the morning, if it uh, works correctly, I hope it will do it again. <laughs> so, other states are the B console, job config, schedules, you can read it by your own. Um, we are split it a bit because um, some of these we are using um, to do um, configuration um, on a running various installation. Yep. Later on, we use the job config to add the job for a second server. So next time, next step is we will create the directory for the server's um, pillar configuration, and in there we have to put tons of uh, variable application. We will walk through that um, in a few minutes. So now check if the pillar data is available. It's just a JSON output. Um, I ask Salt for backup uh, serve one to give me the um, pillar data in JSON format. Yes, and that's it. Now we are ready to install. Uh, all needed packages and doing the configuration. And while this is running, we will have uh, a look into the pillar data. So, from the beginning, um, we have the uh, informations for uh, the database MariaDB. We are installing uh, the package itself, the server, MySQL Python we need. We can set a better password like that in production. And um, I have heavily worked yesterday to get 15.2 uh, working. I have to change this number. And um, installing it uh, on CentOS 7, and we um, using the database type, catalogs um, name, database uh, username, passwords, and what we uh, know from the various uh, configuration. We are creating templates for default job with some. Um, configuration options, um, we have global options, uh, MD5 set, key zip compression. Um, we are creating a restore job, uh, so um, where we can restore files, the client name, the file set. We have a bit of schedules where, is, um, where we use uh, Weekly cycle, weekly cycle after backup, post default schedule, and so on. We can use them later in a job configuration. Oh, that's from a customer, sorry. <laughs> um, the configuration for the file storage, well, restore storage, the pools, pool configuration, an archive, um, the configuration for the storage daemon. Um, with different file storage, one, two, three, four, how much you want. Um, the data for the file daemon itself, because um, we are not only installing the Barrios Direct and uh, storage daemon on that server, we are installing the file daemon too. It's uh, the job configures. Uh, you can see um, we are backing the root directory, we're excluding varlib Barrios or op Barrios. Um, 
but for the backup catalog and these are our job definitions that will end up in configuration are in uh, loaded in barriers so let's have a look if the installation is ready yeah so we installed 47 packages it's not only software it's uh, every package is uh, counted it could be a um, created file or file change so because um, we are not using xfs on our servers um, but i'm using xfs on this uh, demo machine i have to add the fs type xfs on my configuration so that i don't get any error um, when i'm running a job now so that's it we have uh, installed various we can open the b console because i changed the configuration here i we will reload it and we can have a look what the director is having in there so we see we have two jobs here first um, is the base job of the backup server itself it will back up the root file system and the known backup catalog so let's run a job we can use um, because it's more quickly the backup catalog i start the job and it's done so now this is the um, central configuration done in a few minutes and yes that's awesome but we have a client that um, we will back up so here i have to do the same i have to install the salt minion um, normally the salt minion is pre-installed in our images we are using in our company um, so we don't have to do that every time and uh, the salt minion will be available at the salt master after starting an image <coughs> so next step is we are looking into the server and have a look if the salt minion is available actually not because it's installing at this time Okay, now it's gone. Yep, it's available. So now I will add it again to my salt master. And here it is under accepted keys. And we have to do the same with um, this minion. Um, how we did it for the backup server. So we are creating the directory for this group server and um, in there because we are creating it in the state directory we want to create the state file so all we need is the barrios repository to get the right version we want to install the barrios file daemon and this is quite old out of mysql backup to get mysql back up next time I will use the plugin now second is creating the pillar a bit of data so informations for the file daemon who is the director and which version we want to install and uh, for the mysql i have a user a password and a backup directory mail address 
So now we are ready to install the minion. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, we can create the uh, install the file file daemon. This is the JSON output um, again from Salt. So I know okay all um, pillar data are available for installation. Now we can install it, and while that's um, running, oops. We can um, add the pillar configuration for the job. That means um, on the server side, you have to declare the variables to for the for the next job. And um, you know you have um, the jobs integrated into the um, directory configuration. We um, decided to include it with an add and um, create an extra file for the for the client's uh, configuration data. This is done um, with a job config. And these are the information for that. So in the um, state of this backup server, you saw the job config state itself that we will use now. It's pretty fast, so a few changes. What um, has happened in Barrios? The configuration, there is a line, a new line added down there. So um, we are integrating the configuration of the client and that's much more interesting. Here's now the configuration for the group reserve. And um, Salt has configured uh, or, cr or created this file um, out of the pillar data. So we have the client specific information and the different jobs. Base job was its file set. We are back on the root. Some uh, includes here. The collab itself, uh, we are um, back, uh, back up in the uh, IMAP, di IMAP directories. And for MySQL, um, we are using the AutoMySQL backup script um, known from SourceForge. So that's automatically created. And um, we can load it into values. The console reload, and you can see, and uh, over there, we have new jobs, and we can do a backup. So, because of um, a short running. Example, we are using the MySQL database. I execute that, and in short, we will see it's back up in the MySQL and finished. So, um, that's it. With presentation, not an hour, installing Salt as um, configuration management using Git to get um, it documented and uh, have it available on uh, other customer sites and installing a complete various infrastructure. That's it. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, do you always initialize the the full pillars directory? Is that right with all the sub modules for all the possible software you're going to use for um, all customers? Not the pillar. Um, oh, the salt, the salt formula states. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, we do that. Um, I have to. Uh, I I have to look into the configuration because um, I think we can add it with an asterisk, and um, so you have all salt formulas um, available if you ha can uh, use like uh, something like that. Anyone else? Okay, then thank you. Um.